What I am, family? It's your boy SNTV back at y'all with another Chirac Street Legends. And this episode is going to be about none other than Amanda Fitch, aka Big A. Big A is a product of LCMG, or Low City Money Game, which was later changed to Young Money LCMG, which was later changed to 051 Young Money. They came up in the Drexel Towers. Big A was one of the older members, as she is the sister, the older sister of Arius Fitch, AKA 051 Ariel. Big A was alive they was very much clicked up with 800. What a lot of people don't realize about 051 is that they were actually started on 50th and Evans. And they always used to get together at Revis Park and go hoop. And these guys ended up getting cool with the guys from the Drexel buildings. And that's when they became LCMG, then YMLCMG, and then eventually 051 Young Money. They also used to go by Burn Gang. According to certain members, 051 and THF used to always get into it on 47. And in school, it wasn't until people started losing their lives that it got real bloody. And also, THF drew first blood. A lot of people used to say that 051 Young Money, the majority of 051 Young Money anyway, was hoopers. And that THF kind of bullied them into being who they became. After they ended up turning up, they ended up one of the most deadliest gangs in the city of Chicago. According to certain members, Big A was one of the first ones that was turning up for their hood. That's right. A lot of members say that Big A was out in the streets chasing guys down and shooting at guys before a lot of those younger guys even jumped off the porch. A lot of the guys that you know, the 051 Mellies, the 051 Montanas, the Aerials, the Arrows, these guys were young as hell and they wasn't even really in the streets. But Big A was one of the trendsetters of the clique. She was doing shit according to some members before 2008, before Zico actually lost his life. I can remember seeing a post by 051 Mansky that actually corroborates what I'm saying now. Some motherfuckers would know how outstanding you were. Sis been popping niggas before 08. The nation miss you, but you talk with the rest of the wives. Watching down on us still got this shit lit. For 10 plus years, long live Big A. Niggas don't know she paved the way for this shit. Happy Y Day, outstanding member. The streets were very familiar with Big A. They know she'll pull it. The police was very familiar with Big A as well. She had a slew of mug shots from what she had went back and forth to the county. Also, some guy had broken to a police station that was closed down and found Big A on the board with some heavy names from the wise. This leads me to believe that she was considered a top-notch member in her organization. It was said that Big A was the driver on a lot of hits and actually some big hits. It's been rumored that she was actually the driver on the new ski hit. And it's been confirmed that she was actually one of the drivers when LA Capone got killed. This situation took place on Stony Island at the studio. And everybody pretty much knows about how LA Capone died and who did it. But what a lot of people don't know is that 757 is the one that set LA up and that Big A was actually there after being called by certain members. It was Miko Buchanan from the Met Boys, Mick, who was actually 051 and Rockhead on the hit. All of them would end up telling on each other. Mick would end up getting the most time because he was seen as the trigger man with 60 years. Rockhead would get 24 years and Miko would get 45.
Michael May stated that on the date of this murder, a subject known to him as Blank, now known as Blank, was working at the music studio at 71st and Stony Island. Blank stated that Blank called Lil Mick, now known as Saki Hardy Johnson, and told him that Anderson was at the music studio making music. Mays related that he, Lil Mick Hardy Johnson, and Miko Buchanan were on the block at 51st and Prairie. Hardy Johnson and Miko Buchanan got Blank great four-door tours. They called Amanda Fitch. She showed up on the block in her white four-door aluminum. May stated that Miko Buchanan got a 45 caliber handgun from the gang's hiding place on the block. Buchanan gave the handgun to Lil Mick Hardy Johnson. May stated that he knew the gun to be a 45 caliber semi-automatic pistol because he saw it. May stated that Buchanan drove the tourist with Hardy Johnson seated at the front passenger seat. He stated that Hardy Johnson was armed with a 45 caliber pistol. May stated that he and Amanda Fitch followed Buchanan and Hardy Johnson in the white lumina. He stated that they were going to the music studio on Stony Island to shoot Leonard Anderson. Mays stated that when they got to the music studio, Fitch and Mays parked in the lot behind the studio. He stated that Buchanan and Hardy Johnson parked in the alley approximately four houses to the north of the studio. Mays stated that he and Fitch went into the studio to see if L.A. Capone Anderson was there. He stated that Blank told them that Anderson was in the booth making music. Mays stated that Blank made phone calls back and forth to Lil Mick Hardy Johnson. May stated that Anderson went out the back of the studio to use a cell phone. May stated that 30 seconds to a minute later, he heard two shots fired. Mays went out to see what had happened. May stated that he then observed Lil Mick Hardy Johnson standing over Anderson, who was down on the ground. He stated he observed Hardy Johnson holding the 45 caliber pistol in his hand as he stood over Anderson. He stated he observed Hardy Johnson running back to the car that Buchanan was waiting in. May stated that he was still on the back porch of the studio when he observed Buchanan and Hardy Johnson drive away from the scene southbound through the alley. He stated that he and Fitch left the scene before the police arrived. Mays further stated that the following day, Lil Mick Hardy Johnson bragged that he shot Anderson in the face. Mays subsequently identified photos of Leonard Johnson as the victim L.A. Capone, Amanda Fitch's Big A, Miko Buchanan, and Saki Hardy Johnson as Lil Mick before they identified photos of Blank. This is not a verbatim account, but only a summary. Here we are. This is recording. Uh, this gonna be a hit song, man. You recording this shit? You can sit on camera, man. After his death, guys would get on the internet mocking him. And Lil Mick, who was the shooter, cut his dread to change his description. At the time when L.A. Capone was killed, Young Money and 600 was beefing heavy. L.A. Capone was actually one of the biggest rappers coming up out of the city of Chicago. The BDs were already known on a national scale through the Chief Keith and Dirt. But 600 was making its way and LA was in the forefront. So this was probably the biggest hit that took place between Young Money and 600. This hurt 600 bad. As a matter of fact, after LA died, 600 basically fell apart. LA was affiliated with a lot of other BD sets. One in particular being THL, who Young Money was already beefing with. So obviously, THF would do anything to get back for LA. And only a month and a few weeks later, Big A would end up losing her life as well. And on November 14th, 2013, Big A would end up going to the gas station. There's a lot of speculation on why she even pulled up at the gas station and what she was there for. But we do know that she was in the car with Rocco or Rockhead who was later accused of setting her up. She pulled up to the gas station and she was sitting there. What she was waiting on is unclear. A dark colored vehicle pulled up, fired three shots inside the driver's side window and sped off. Big A would later die at Soldier Hospital. 
A 24-year-old woman was shot to death in a Woodlawn gas station. Shortly before 6 p.m., the woman's body was found in a car in the 6600 block of South Stony Island Avenue. Amanda Fitch, 24, of the 4700 block of South Ellis Avenue was pronounced dead at Georgia Hospital at 6.53 p.m., according to the Cook County Medical Examiner's Office. Adrian Housing said she was on her way to collect signatures for an election in the nearby McDonald's when she saw the shooting occur at the BP gas station across the street. I was coming down the street and somebody pulled up next to this car and they shot three times through the driver's window. It was just a dark colored vehicle. He sped out the gas station. Housing said all three bullets went directly through the driver's side window near the side view mirror. She saw the victim slumped over. Housing was disturbed by the incident, but not surprised. She's recently had to hit the dirt twice while walking on 71st Street. I don't know if it's because of the police presence. I don't know if people are just thirsty, but it's ridiculous. I've never seen the neighborhood go from sugar to shit like it has, and something needs to be done, Housing said. It will later come out in an interview that was held by the CPD with Lil Mick that 051 suspected that Rocco backdoored Big A. For one, Rocco was in the car when Big A was killed and could nobody figure out how he wasn't hit. It is unclear who exactly from THF did the hit on Big A, but it is confirmed that it was THF. All I have on the situation is speculation. Therefore, I won't mention it. And I think that what we can learn from the life and death of Big A is this. Big A and L.A. Capone were killed blocks away from each other. Big A had no business at that gas station. Big A should have known that she was too much of a threat to let her get a pass. And if they ever caught up with her, that they would do her just like any other man that was out there. Observance, awareness, and being cautious has always been a problem in the city of Chicago. There's full-blown wars with it. plenty of blood and gore. And people still come outside to party. They still go to stores, shop at malls, stop at gas stations. And there's never been a shortage of dead bodies. Why? Because they're not aware. In the case of Big A, she could have stayed alive and survived if she would have never stopped at that gas station. But I do still believe that she would have got time in prison for the L.A. hit because she was implicated in that hit. Karma is real, y'all. You do wrong wrong comes back but I do understand the streets and I understand how the game go you get caught lacking while it's cracking you will die rest in peace to Big A rest in peace to LA Capone this has been another Chirac Street Legend it's your boy SCN TV